Welcome to Conscious Co-Creation, straight talk about life, business, mind, and spirit. And I'm really excited today, because today I have a wonderful guest with me. I have Connie Baxter. And we have the beautiful book with us, The Trust Frequency. And this is what we're going to be focusing on today. And her beautiful partner is not with her today, but Andrew Cameron Bailey co-wrote co -wrote this book with her. And I'm going to let her tell you where she is right now because she is a warrior and this is where she is recording from today. So why don't you share with us where you are today? Well, thanks, Carly. I am in Palm Springs. I am at the Star Knowledge Conference. That is a gathering of star people, Native Americans. It's put on by Native Americans. You know, you know I don't know if you're aware, but the Native Americans are very connected to the stars and to the star people. And I've spent extensive time with visionary elders throughout the past 30 years and have been very aware of their connection with the star people. And uh, we, uh, we've actually done a film called In Search of the Future where we have several elders speaking of their relationship with the star people and their understanding of the fact that we came from the stars. And so this is the first star knowledge conference I've come to and I wanted to come to, to bring the book, uh, The Trust Frequency, so I, because I want the, the Native people to know what we're bringing to the table with this book, which is the, the Native cosmology, indigenous cosmology and quantum science, a synthesis into a whole new way, a perspective on seeing how the universe works and our place in it. Well, I wanted you to tell people where are you actually filming from today, though, because that's, that's a story in itself. So oh, where are you filming from today? That's why I called you a warrior. <laughs> that, uh, I am in my van. Uh, I've driven a van since 1970. And uh, right now we're in my van, our van, Andrew's in my van. It was really fortunate that when I was in my 50s, I met a man who likes to live in a van. And so we've been on the road ever since we met. We've, we've lived in houses. We, we had a retreat center in Sedona, Arizona. And we still have um, one of the houses of that retreat center. And um, so I'm here in the van, and I am i wasn't made for living in houses. I was made for living in a van, outside, a living life of freedom, and on the road. So um, that's what we do, and that's where I am right now. So I wanted to share that, because there's something about being a warrior and having the spirit of traveling you know, around the United States and wherever else I know you travel outside of the United States as well and just having that warrior spirit just just traveling wherever you want to go at any given moment and so I just wanted to let everyone know that you are in your van and and you have that warrior spirit so I also wanted to get into letting everyone know what was your inspiration behind writing this book well for me this is a co-written by me and Andrew and really, basically, when we met, we met at the Omega Institute in 2003. And I, immediately upon talking to him, I saw that we shared a big picture view of the world. And we shared a, an interest in what it would take to have humanity move to a higher level, move into its true, authentic, loving selves. And so that was my journey, my personal journey from from teenagehood really because I, I grew up in a family in Maine who were philanthropists. They were governors and mayors and gave away the family fortune basically to the people of Maine in the form of um, Baxter State Park, um, Mount Katahdin, the sacred mountain of the, of the native people back there and many other things. So they weren't resonating to the prevailing paradigm. They were giving all their money away. And, and championing women and the earth and, and in office. So I had this heritage and I was wondering what they were resonating to and also I just saw through through Florence Nightingale actually that, that we are capable of such love and so what, what occurred to me was what is missing in the paradigm? What is missing in our information that has us acting the way we do, treating each other, our children, the earth the way we do. So that was just somehow I asked that question and the answers you get depend on the questions you ask and my life became a, a, a journey of discovery 
of, of seeking these missing pieces of the paradigm. And I took up with a, an Austrian ski champion when I was 19 and went to Europe looking for these missing pieces. And all I found was more of the same. And then I was um, in uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico in the late 70s and picked up a book of Native American poetry and discovered that 500 Indian nations are carrying keys to the missing pieces of the paradigm, the, the, the pathway to the heart, the, the, the oneness of all things and the interconnectedness of all things. And after that, visionary elders started coming into my life. So for 20 years, I was sharing the, these, these elders and what they know and what they know about the nature of the universe and in Aspen, Colorado. And um, so my life became very much involved with the native way of, of life. And I, when I was raising my children, I felt that the only way I could raise true humans was to expose them to this way of knowing, this way of thinking. And so that became my, my life through raising my three children. We spent a lot of time uh, on the Indian reservations at Hopi Land and uh, with the Ute Indians. We were in uh, Colorado. And um, so the visionary elders, I say that, the visionary elders came to me. The ones who see the universal oneness of all things and are ready to walk in their hearts and be one with all races and all people. And that's what's happening here at this Star Knowledge Conference. These people, this is, is the oneness. This is that we are all beings of light and that we came here to work together, to be together in our hearts to bring peace on earth and heaven on earth. And that's what our book's about. So before we go any further, there's a couple things I want to touch upon so we can actually get everybody else involved in our conversation. And so, and, um, so for me anyways, I had the logo, We Are All Interconnected for Eons, which, so I, I just want to say a couple things. As one is, I had a delight reading your book because it just resonated with me on so many levels. So thank you for sending me the book and allowing me to read it before we had this interview. It was just, I had, uh, it was just, I couldn't stop putting, <laughs> I literally could not put the book down. I was like, oh my God, and it was just, it was just um, absolutely delightful. And two, let us touch upon the definitions before we continue having this conversation and let us touch upon the actual how you are in your writing, you have specific definitions that you have applied to certain words. So why don't we have that discussion so that as we continue the conversation, they are understanding from your point of view what some of those words, as you're starting to say them, what your definitions are for those words like paradigm, etc. So yeah. why, don't, why don't we have that conversation to start? Okay. Well, what we're going for is, and one thing I want to say, thank you very much. I'm so glad you enjoyed the book. Andrew, who actually wrote the book, uh, just wrote it in such a manner that it is so accessible and fun to read and bringing, bringing so much information and a, and a new perspective that actually challenges many of our core assumptions about the nature of the universe. And that's what we're doing. We're going for core assumptions things we don't even know we have, beliefs we don't even know we have, that we're overlaying, we're over, even conscious people are overlaying uh, new thought, new ways of seeing and being without going to these core, very, very core assumptions and, and rooting them up and, and having a look at them. And so wh what we're, um, the first definition is an assumption. It's a core belief that we take to be true without question. Okay, we, we take this on. When we, when we wake up as a little baby, we come open our eyes as a little baby, we look around and it's our job to survive. And we see how everybody's functioning. It's not that someone conditioned us from the outside. We took on from our society, from our parents, how to fit in. Okay, how do I fit in? How am I successful? Am I loved? Am I, is it going to work? going to make it work for me because that's our job as a as a human being to to thrive and propagate the species and we've got to fit in or we'll end up in a loony bin or you know spanked and in the corner at school we take on this way of being and way of thinking and then in school we get told by the scientific paradigm that this is the Darwin you know the competition that we've got to fight to survive it's survival of the fittest so we go through this whole system that's teaching us erroneous information about the nature of the universe. 
And so we are um, going for those assumptions. So that's our first our first definition is what is an assumption? Because it's been said, don't ha don't assume it makes an ass out of you and me. But we have assumptions. I mean, those are our core beliefs. And um, a paradigm is a set of core assumptions that creates our reality, and um, that we make a decision on every moment of the day. When we get up in the morning, from that moment on, we make a decision about what we're going to do with our day based on our paradigm, our set of assumptions. So um, then we have a very important definition. And this, this is, is a key piece for understanding humanity's place in all this. And that is, and I'll read that, it's, humanity is a collection of divine, autonomous, sovereign beings who have chosen to incarnate on earth to learn and grow on their soul's journey to wholeness, each with an individual purpose and a unique gift. You see, so this, this is a key understanding in this whole construct, because what we're presenting is a construct. It's a complete paradigm. It's a complete construct that we say you have to take as absolutely true to have this change your life. If you say, oh, yeah, but, you know, that doesn't work. It's, yes, this is absolutely true. And then that flips everything that we've ever thought about our place in the universe and what the universe is, is all about. So we, we just say, take do that as an exercise. If you really want to change your life, you have to take, okay, this is absolutely true. And, and so... This, this idea of humanity being a collection of divine, autonomous, sovereign beings who have chosen. See, this is our overarching act of free will, that we have chosen to come on earth on a soul's journey to wholeness with a purpose and a gift. Okay? So we, when we incarnated, this, is, this assumes uh, reincarnation. You know, there's a lot of challenging assumptions that, that we're making, you know, sub-assumptions. Um, that we, we chose, we're conscious, we chose to come on earth, we chose our family, we chose our circumstances for this journey to wholeness. And, and, and so we gave permission to the loving energies on the planet to take us on that journey to wholeness. And then we incarnate in a lower frequency that makes us think we want to fit in to the fear frequency, basically the lower frequency way of doing things, where the, the laws and the rules look immutable. Well, we're saying, and as we go on in this, the laws in the, are not immutable. They're immutable in this frequency, and I'll define frequency in a minute. But we have, we've, we've said we're going to go, we're going to bring this gift, we're going to go on this journey to wholeness, so loving energies, you can take me on this journey. So, um, and then I'll get into describing more of what I mean by the loving energies, okay? So we, um, that's just a key, key thing to understand, that everything that's come in our life has come to us out of our permission for our learning, for our growth on this planet. So um, the next one is, is love, okay? Let's now, this go back to frequency, though, because that's a big one. A lot of people, you know, in the, they'll go, oh, that's woo-woo, and what is frequency? So let's go, before you go into love and everything else, let's go back to frequency, because that's a big one. Frequency yeah. is a big one for a lot of people. Right. Well, what I'll tell you something. I'm here with the Star Knowledge Conference, and everything is about frequency. It's about your vibratory rate, where what you're vibrating at, and, 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 and what frequency you're in and what frequency and what we're saying is there's only free will there's only love and the free that free will is our ability to choose our frequency our right to choose our frequency that is free will from our perspective and and um, so frequency is is um, like good vibes you know, good, good, good vibrations. You know, it's the 60s term of, okay, where are you vibrating at? And, and Andrew always uses this example of, um, of, have you ever been in love? You know, 
what's it like? What do you feel like? You know, does doesn't everything happen magically when you're in love? And and when you're in in anger and and fear and anger, doesn't nothing works? Well, that's that's the difference in 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 the vibratory rate, and that's the difference in frequency. So we are calling the trust frequency that frequency. And here I'll read that the the trust frequency where the soul's destiny awaits with more abundance, balance, freedom, and joy than we can fathom, where the true nature of the universe is experienced. Okay? And, and the frequency we define as the vibratory rate that determines the characteristics of a particular reality. There are a wide range of frequencies, each with its own reality and its own distinct laws. Okay? So this is a key piece, and that is that each frequency has a different set of laws. Okay, Henry David Thoreau and his, um, you know who Dan Henry Thoreau is, the um, transcendentalist writer? Um, he wrote in the conclusion to Walden, he wrote Walden and um, changed the world with civil disobedience, and he wrote in the conclusion to Walden, he wrote, I learned this, at least, by my experiment that when one walks confidently in the direction of his dreams, he will pass a certain boundary. He will experience a success unexpected in common hours. The laws that apply to him will be expanded, or new laws will be made in his favor, and he will live with the license of a higher order of beings. So this told me after living with Native Americans, theirs is a trust-based paradigm. They trust. They don't save. They don't hoard. They trust. This is the essence of their cosmology. They trust that there will be more tomorrow. You don't hoard. You don't take more than you need. You take what you need, and you know that tomorrow there will be more. That's a trust-based paradigm. And when Henry Thoreau said this, I saw that the laws in the frequencies are different. And uh, there's also a, a quote attributed to Goethe, which he didn't actually write, but most people think he did. It's the one, I don't know if you're familiar with this one, about um, uh, when one commits without hesitation, without a chance of drawing back. you know that one, Carly? Yes. Yeah. Okay. When one commits without the chance of, of pulling back, that means you have trusted so implicitly you are over that line of total trust. He says, he says, then, I don't have this one quite as memorized, but he says, he says, okay, when you, tr when you commit, providence moves too, and you experience all manner of unforeseen circumstances, chance meetings, material assistance, which no man could have dreamt would have come his way. Okay? And he's saying the same thing as Sothoro, and he, but what we're saying is, it's not providence who moves, it's you who moves yourself into a higher frequency where there's chance meetings, material assistance, which no man could have dreamt would have come his way because we can't fathom it from this frequency, from this conditioned mind, from, from this mind that we think these are the only, this is the only game in town. Well, it is the only game in town in the frequency. But we have the free will, and we ha our soul's whole destiny and purpose is to move into this higher frequency. So um, that's what we're, you know, the essence of, of, of what we're bringing to the table that, that people aren't, aren't normally aware of. So now here's the thing. How do, you know, there's, there's right now in this society we have a major divide between the spiritual people that are, already conscious and aware of this conversation and we have people that are still asleep and want nothing to do with what they would call the woo-woo land. So in my, in my work that I do is I always, is, I call it bridging. In other words, how do we have the conversation with people that want nothing to do with woo-woo land and bridge them to a conversation of understanding on how to actually elevate their frequency and use words that they can understand without, you know, basically shoving things down their throat, if you will. So I think I think we, as in the conversation with people that do understand this language, we need to find a way to actually bridge them, 
In other words, you know, you know what I'm saying, correct? It's like we we need to. I think we do. I think we have a responsibility to educate people about words like frequency and soul and reincarnation and free will. What is free will? And because I think that there's there's too much of a divide right now between people that are awake and people that are asleep. And I think that the the people that are are, are awake. I think too many people try and shove it down people's throats instead of finding a way to have the conversation. And so I think books like The Trust Frequency, I think it's a really good tool, and I think it is done in a way that I think people that, that, that can hear it. And I, and I think I think like The Secret, the, the, the book The Secret that came out, the one disservice I think that it, that it did do was that it left out a lot of components. It's kind of like, it's, it was kind of like, okay, do this and do that, and just hold your hands open, it and, and it'll automatically fall in your lap. Right. As you know, it doesn't work that way. Right. And the interesting thing that, w that we're bringing to the table, and one thing I want to say to you, that we've been told that this book actually does serve the mainstream, that, it, it, that we should get it to the mainstream, that, it, that people will be able to grok it, from the mainstream, and that's, that was our whole goal, was to write something that's baggageless as far as religion is concerned. We don't go to any of the major religions. We, we're just speaking of love, of the human heart, the human spirit, and the interconnectedness of all things that, 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 that um, quantum science is now proving. You see, it's, it's really like the Titanic, you know, moving, turning the Titanic. When you're trying to change a scientific paradigm, you know, something that's been in, in, in effect since Newton and Descartes and Darwin and all that stuff. So there's all these textbooks, all these people have their tenure and their, their, their life dependent on the fact that they're telling the truth. Well, their truth has been supplanted by a new science, by, by scientific, Western science is now proving that that's erroneous as information. But, but getting people to shift that and getting textbooks to change and teachers to change and, and, and people to change their minds, you know, is, is, um, is a gargantuan task, as, you, as you've noted. And, and so we just are coming, we want to be considered thinkers in the evolution of human thought. So Andrew brought to this book and to this construct that I basically discovered through my association with the Native Americans and I, that I had sort of in place when I met Andrew and he was just blown away by it and he's been a Sufi he was raised in South Africa he's known many indigenous tribes over there he's known apartheid he was a chemistry professor so he's a scientist and he brought he brought that construct to what might people might consider woo-woo you know my daughter always said mom you need an interpreter you know and but I see what I see, I know what I know, and it's beautiful, it's amazing, and all these Native Americans at this Star uh, Knowledge Conference are totally confirming, and all the because I got it through through a visionary Native elders in the first place, and my own knowing. But so Andrew brought so much to it and wrote a book that's very accessible to the to the normal person. But my dad, I want to tell you, my father has tried to read it and doesn't get it. You know, and I just don't think it's our responsibility to those people. I think that it's, I feel from my perspective, it's key for me to bring what I know to the table. And, and then people can do what they want with it. It's not my job. They're on their soul's journey. I have my soul's journey. I have a role to play, a purpose, a gift. I'm doing the best I can. That's all any of us can do is the best we can to bring our gift to the table. And what I'm understanding is that's, that's the key to it all. Just be your authentic self. Bring your gift. Don't worry about other people. Don't be shoving stuff down people's throats. You know, live your life. Be an example. Be a model. And if they resonate to you, cool. If they don't, cool. Let them go. They have their soul's journey. They'll come to it on their own. And, and I just think that's just a key piece. Our family members, whoever it is, we just love them, kiss them, say you know I love you and if they don't choose to be in our field anymore because they don't resonate to it then they have their reality they have their choices they'll, they'll make their way it's not dependent on every person making this shift because it's really you know they talk about judgment day 
you know, in the, in the Bible or whatever. You know, it's not judgment day. It's choice day. We each have a choice to make on a deep, deep level. And we've got to do our work and, and show up and, and, and clean up our frequency, our vibratory rate. And if not, whatever whatever's going to happen as far as how the different frequencies are going to um, to split and and I don't know you know that's beyond my understanding as far as you know is it is there going to be two dimensions you know parallel dimensions to realities and right now we have that right now I mean there's there's people on your block and people in your office or whatever wherever you do that you never see you know because you're 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 on different wavelengths you know old friends who've made a choice to go in a different direction you know you never see them again you used to run into them all the time and now you never see them again because the frequencies are separating so I don't know if as this whole shift occurs if if there's going to be two earths some people say there's going to be two earths you know because the earth is moving into a higher vibration my understanding it's been in the fear frequency that's why we've got all this fear stuff we've been doing and now we're it's moving into a higher vibration and now we have to let go of those fear beliefs fear behaviors all that stuff so we can move with the earth you know so it's our choice it's just choice and and we got to let other people just have their own way and their own reality and let them be in my opinion i agree with that I do need to let everyone know that we are on Intention Radio. Please check out IntentionRadio.com and please make sure to check out IntentionCall.com. They have a beautiful call on Saturdays at 3 p.m. where a group of people get together and they pick something to intend upon. And please make sure to check out this beautiful book, The Trust Frequency. And please, Connie, can you please let everyone know where they can find this book since this also is a podcast. Okay. Uh, one thing, my name is Connie Baxter Marlowe. Oh, that's Connie correct. Baxter. And um, and the website is thetrustfrequency.net. We also have a YouTube channel called The Trust Frequency where we have a lot of people speaking from this frequency, their experiences from this frequency and various indigenous elders um, speaking um, on, on YouTube as well. And we've also done a film. Our film website is in search of the future movie dot com. And I had um, this is a this is our film. This is the you know the cover of our film. And this is a companion piece to our book. And when people order our book from our website, they get a copy of the film with it as a bonus. And um, so we recommend you, if you want the book, you go to our website. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it on Smashwords and all the e-books, e but you don't get our film with it. And um, the film is the various elders that have come to me through my life and, and Andrew's life. It's people we've known for 20 to 40 years speaking the truth from their perspective. And it, and it brings in the star people. It brings in some very beautiful understandings of, of the origin and future of humanity and what we're doing here. And uh, the Father of Chaos series, Ralph Abraham, is in it as well. And many other, not just Native elders, but um, various uh, wise people from, from all cultures. And it's called In Search of the Future, What Do the Wise Ones Know? So mm. that's... Um, I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. I do have it. I just haven't had a chance, and I do plan on watching it. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I'm sorry about your name. I don't know for some reason with all the emails going back and forth, the Baxter stood out for me. So I do apologize for that that is Connie Baxter Marlowe. Yeah. So, anyways, I'm very thrilled to have you with us. So thank you so much for taking yeah. time to be with us. Sweet to be with you, Carly. And we are going to continue this conversation. So let's get more into the book and the paradigms. Okay. Yeah, let's see as far as the assumptions. Um, okay. We have another um, assumption, which is um, not assumption, excuse me, definition. Okay, we defi define circumstance as the seemingly uncontrollable outward events that influence our decisions. Okay? So what we're saying with our assumptions is that circumstance actually loves us more than we do because circumstance is guiding us on our journey to wholeness 
So everything that happens in our lives through circumstance is actually love showing up for us and taking us on a journey that our conscious mind didn't think we wanted to go on because we incarnated in this lower frequency where we think we want certain things to be loved, accepted, and and um, successful and all that. So um, then another, um, another uh, definition is consciousness. See, this is key, too, for our understanding of the assumptions. And that is that you see, we define consciousness as universal consciousness is the primordial life energy of the universe. Okay? And, and old science doesn't recognize this. The new science recognizes that everything starts with consciousness. And the old science doesn't recognize that. And then the, um, the human uh, consciousness, we, we divide the human consciousness into something we call the seven A's. And we'll, I'll go into that later. But um, the, the seven things that we have um, control over. Okay, so we have control over our lives, what, where we put our attention, what we, what we think, what, what, we're, what our attitude is. And I'll go into that in a, in a few minutes. And then the universe. <clears throat> we define the universe. So no one thing, the, the consciousness, the seven A's actually determine our frequency. Okay? So I'll go into that further shortly. But the universe we define as all that is, both manifest and unmanifest, also known as God, Creator, Atman, and so on. We call it the conscious loving universe. Okay? So those are our, our definitions that go into, that lay the foundation for our assumptions. Now, a beautiful book in person that went into the, con you're talking about the consciousness, was Bruce Lipton. Yeah, we, we quote Bruce. He's doing something very important, and that is that, that we're not controlled by our genes. We are, um, we are able to shift our, our genes, that we actually, our thoughts actually create our reality. And so he's, he's confirming what we're saying. But if we want to go into the... Um, the assumptions, one thing we say, that we basically present and resolve six paradoxes that have confused and confounded humanity forever. And we feel that we are, and you see, this is what's happening as we're raising in our consciousness, we're coming to understand these things that, that science couldn't explain. And our current fear-based beliefs couldn't couldn't explain because the truth has been there on the table. We've seen it. It's in the core of all of our religions. It's in our core, um, in our the books, the, the the literature that has lasted through the ages. And we see it, and we call it fantasy. We call it, you know, it just it, it just creates a paradox that that confounds us. And so as we're raising our consciousness and our level of consciousness and our level of understanding of the nature of the universe these paradoxes go away because we're actually coming to understand the true nature of the universe. I mean, I always thought, okay, I'm not going to put my, base my life on a science that has phenomena that it can't explain, that it just disregards as, oh, that didn't happen. That's impossible. When people are experiencing, you know, telekinesis, telepathy, etc., and, and science says, oh, no. That's impossible. That's ridiculous. Hey, excuse me? I'm not going to put my life on that. <laughs> you know, base my life on a science that doesn't know what it's talking about, basically, as far as I'm concerned. So that's what another thing that led me on this quest. So um, I'd like to talk about the, the, the first paradox that we present. And I don't know how much time we'll have if we get, get further along, but... The first one I is really tell important. you we have about 20 minutes left. Yeah. So the first one is really important. But one thing I'd ask you, Carly, what, what did you find about the book that that you uh, that really resonated to you? Well, the, I think the whole book actually for me resonated. And what I was saying was about every single step of the way was about how everything, first of all, we talked about how everything was interconnected. For me, it was about how we all, the raising of the frequency, 
um, about how we actually, for me anyways, how we all live on multiple planes, um, which most people I don't think realize is that as we, are, as we are on one plane, we actually are on more than one plane at the same time, um, which I don't think some people realize. Um, also, how I'd have to actually pull up some of the assumptions so I could actually, um, let me pull up the chapter actually that I was looking at. I have actually, let me pull up one thing here. Well, one thing you said to me is that, that, that the book really resonates to your deepest knowing and that it felt so good to have somebody articulating what you've known all your life and, and that's in your deepest, deepest knowing. And, and I think that's true and that's what we want. we're saying is that this is what we all know. It is our true nature. We're not telling anybody anything new. We're just confirming it, articulating it in a way that maybe you can put a hook on it and, and base your life on it, you know? Exactly. So a lot of it was awareness, the assumption, the attitude. That really also I thought was really, and um, the second one which is the intention, alignment, action, and allowing. So a lot of it was, and the biggest one for me also love was the free will is an absolute law of the universe. I think a lot of people don't really understand the free will piece, that every single thing is a choice. Okay, and what, how we resolve that is that what, with this definition of humanity, okay, because it looks like determinism, you know, circumstance has taken you someplace you didn't want to go. And you're supposed, because according to the secret, see, and, and for us the secret was, was limiting. And that is, you know, that if you think it, you're going to get it. Well, there's, there's several aspects to that um, that I would, would comment on, but, but the fact that, that circumstance is taking that you gave permission. See, the way we resolve that, the circumstance versus free will quandary, is that when we incarnated, we gave permission to go on this journey. We gave permission. We said, I will go with a purpose, with a gift on my soul's journey to wholeness. So that was our overarching act of free will. And then we come down on the planet, and we think we want to go here, we think we want to go there because the society says so, but our soul has quite something else in mind. And so the loving energies come in the form of circumstance. Our soul actually magnetizes the circumstance, and, and, and even how people treat us, you know, uh, uh, you know, people say, okay, you know, what about abuse? You know, somebody came in and, and, and this baby has been abused, these children have been abused. And, and, and our soul actually magnetizes that behavior, actually creates the behavior. And so let me go back to, to, to assumption one and two, because this is key for an understanding of this. See, what we say in assumption one, we say we live in a conscious, loving universe. There is only love. Okay? So, we've all heard God is love. You know, all that stuff. So this is the huge paradox. All right. If God is love, how is there war? How is there abuse? Why? What? Wherefore? What's going on if God is love? Right? It makes no sense. So we throw out God. We throw out the, the baby with the bathwater. And the, the simple fact of the matter is we resolve this in, in assumption two where we say the universe loves us unconditionally. It gives us everything we ask for. Okay? So, unconditional love. We're pretty much re redefining the word unconditional love because everyone thinks, oh, I'm, I'm going to be loved unconditionally. It means I'm going to be hugged and loved and sweetness and light no matter what I do. Okay? But what unconditional love truly is, is that this loving universe loves us so much that it gives us everything we ask for, meaning that our soul came in for a journey, we get that journey, okay? If our soul came in to experience abuse in this lifetime, our soul came in to experience death by murder, okay? Our soul came in to die in a typhoon in the Philippines, you know, there is only love, there is only the soul's journey to wholeness, and there's only free will. And it's when you take those three things as absolutes, you have to come to understand that everything has a purpose, everything is as it should be, and that that soul chose 
that experience. There's only love, there's only free will, and there's only the soul's journey to wholeness. So this is a big one because it takes away the victim. It takes away the victim-perpetrator model, which we have been stuck in forever. And this is time to let it go and to know that we are so loved by all of creation that everything in our life has come to us out of love. It doesn't feel like love all the time, but we have to know that that is absolutely true. And, and we, we frame it that way you know, because people are saying, well, you take responsibility for everything that happens in your life. Okay, taking responsibility, that's, that's a big, big chunk. Oh, I'm taking responsibility for this person uh, who's, who's mean to me and nasty to me or abused me or I'm taking responsibility for war, whatever. No, what we want to say, I mean, that's true, but we'd rather um, frame it in the words of love that this is love coming to you because your soul chose it you want you desperately want to become whole you def def desperately want to bring your gift but you don't know how because it, you're enshrouded in these these beliefs and understandings that aren't true that are, aren't aligned with your true nature or the true nature of the universe so this is unconditional love taking you on your journey to wholeness, that's all there is, from our perspective. And you and you realize, and that's, I mean, and I work with clients that have dealt with a lot of abuse, and it is a really hard thing. And I, and I talk to them about this stuff, and it, it is, it's as much as we tell them that, it's a really hard thing for them to. Um, it is. It, it's, it's. It's a big. It's, it's a big one for people to really accept. And the, and the sad part is until they actually one of the things I actually did actually just on a recent interview that just got aired today actually was I actually said to them I choose to be a victor over a victim and it's, it's and it is it's a mindset it's a choice to choose what you choose to be and until you choose to be a victor until you choose to accept love until you choose to love yourself until you choose to love you know everyone that's involved until you choose to let everything go you're always going to be trapped in that victim mentality. And yeah. so, as you say, until you choose to, to go into a journey of love, you're still going to be trapped in that victim mentality. And it's a really, really hard thing, because I grew up with severe sexual, verbal, physical abuse, so it's kind of funny you're talking about all this. And it's, it is, it's, it's, a really, it's a really hard trap that people get stuck in, and they do not know how to get out. And it's a really hard conversation to have with people, because they... They just, they're, they're, it's a really hard thing for them to actually accept that they've chosen a path or, you know, that, that they, you know, that they've chosen. I mean, it just, it's a really hard conversation for them to swallow. It yeah. Is, you know, it's and a very the story interesting is, the, story is, the story is so engaging and so powerful in many ways. Poor pitiful me, yep. you, know, I, I, you know, I have this story, so... But what freedom to get set free from it and to open one's heart to know that one is so loved that it's the only love that has done this. And, and it, I know it's, it's, it's quite a, a quandary. For, uh, how do you feel about it? Well, for me, it's like I, I already know, like, you know, I, I could blame people for the cows come home. At the end of the day, I choose freedom. For me, it's all about choosing freedom. Because until I choose freedom and until I choose love, I'm going to be trapped, and I don't choose to be trapped. So for me, that's how I've dealt with it. I've dealt with it. You know, I don't. I don't choose to be trapped. I don't choose to be a victim ever. I've always been a very positive person, no matter what's going on in my life. I've, you know, I've chosen to forgive. I've chosen to love. I choose to be free. So for me, it's all. It's always been a choice of being free. It's always been a choice. Uh, I'm not saying not always. I mean, obviously, there was a time in my life that I was very angry, I was very bitter, and I, I, you know, I, I, I've been there. I've been trapped, and so I went through my own catalyst, my own, my own journey to freedom, and and my own journey of choosing love. <laughs> um, so yeah, for me, it's about choosing love. It's about choosing freedom. That's so great. I, you know, I do get. I do You're get. Model. Right. You're a model for for everyone you deal with. You know that you've been through it, and you're you're making that choice. Oh, hey, absolutely. I, you know, what, I choose, what time is it? 
How what? much time do we have? How much time do we have left? Because I have nine minutes left on my computer battery. Okay, so we're at not much longer. We actually only have ten minutes, and I actually have to do a little intention break here, saying we are on Intention Radio, and please check out IntentionRadio.com and TheIntentionCall.com. Please make sure you go to IntentionCall.com and check out the intention that they create every Saturday at 3 p.m. And please make sure you check out the wonderful book, The Trust Frequency, and make sure you go check out the beautiful people, Andrew Cameron Bailey and Connie Baxter Marlowe. Um, and make sure you also check out the movie that if you buy the book on their website does come with the book. And so since she only has nine minutes left, I'm going to give her the floor so that you can share with everyone what you would like to leave the audience with. Okay. Um, uh, let me just say that the, the next assumption is we create reality by the power of our consciousness. And then... And, and that presents a paradox. What do you mean? Obviously, there's other things that create reality. And the, 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 the next uh, assumption is that it defines consciousness, the, the seven A's. And I'd love to leave people with the seven A's that we have control over. These are our requests to the universe. This loving universe, we've just, uh, we've just put it on the plate. There's a loving universe. What it's going to respond to is our request. And we're saying that the requests are the seven A's, our assumptions, because these these all have a vibratory frequency, okay? So it's a request to the loving universe, and it's also a vibration thing. You can't get around it. There's just no getting around it. It's a vibratory thing. So it's assumption, what our assumptions are, what our awareness, what we're willing to bring into our awareness and, and resolve, and um, what our attitude is towards whatever's happened in our lives, like Carly is, is choosing love, choosing freedom, she's, you know, her attitude about her life experiences, and um, where we put our attention. This whole thing with conspiracy and the they that are doing all this to us and all that, yeah, you can have any reality you want. This is the free will. You can choose your frequency. So you can choose it. You put your attention there, you put your vibration there, you've empowered it, in the world and you've also brought it into your life and your dream, your vision, your reality. So then the next one is alignment. What are we aligned with? What level of things? Are we aligned with our heart? Are we aligning with what uh, another belief system or whatever we are aligning with? And then action. Action is key. If we don't act from this place, we don't get in the frequency. Our body has to be in that place where this magic can find us. And if we're at a job out of fear, we're not in a place where we can be associated with people that are going to take us to a level that we can't even imagine. And then the last one is allowing. What do, do we just understand that it's a loving universe and that we now, we've done everything we know how with our seven A's and now we step back and we allow those seven A's to do their job, the loving universe, to show up with stuff that's beyond our ability to imagine. A job, um, you know, chance meetings, financial assistance, material assistance, which no man could have dreamt would have come his way. That's the difference with the secret. The secret is saying, okay, you take your, your mind and your understanding and you can manipulate the unified field and get what you want. Yes, you can. That was so important about the secret. You can manipulate the unified field. You are we are powerful, powerful beings. But ultimately the question is, do we want to? Why would we manipulate the unified field to enmesh us further in this lower frequency and get the stuff and get the job that we think we want? Why not step back, put our attention, get our frequency up there, our vibration up there, and then see what comes to us that's beyond our ability to imagine? You know, which Goethe said is, it's not Goethe, but which no man could have dreamt would have come his way, and 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 Thoreau says, a, a success unexpected in common hours. We can't imagine it because it's out of our frequency. It's the laws are different. We can't. We just can't conceive of it. So let's just let the unknown bring us something way better than we can imagine. So that's my gift. So is there anything else you'd like to leave the audience with? 
No, just um, just open your heart, open your mind, and and let the let your own knowing come in and trust your own knowing. Trust the loving universe and trust your own knowing because you're getting intuitively, you're getting your instructions. And the important thing is for you to play your part of the symphony to the best of your ability because the symphony needs all of us. It needs everybody playing their part. We can't go and play somebody else's part and tell them how to play their part. That's that's their business. That's their, They've got to play that violin or that cello or whatever. We've got to play our part and show up exactly at the moment that the conductor says, you're on, this is what to do, go straight, turn left, turn right, do whatever. You listen and you act. And you'll be in the magic and the whole world will benefit from from that modeling of, of your courage and, and ability to, to be in the magic. So since this is a podcast, can you please let everyone know where they can find you once again? Well, they can find us on the trustfrequency.net and we have also in search of the future movie.com and we also do a lot of work with the founding of America and the the trust based paradigm that founded America in Plymouth and the relationship with the Native Americans that the Mayflower pilgrims uh, experienced and and that that happened in Plymouth at the founding of this nation of the first 50 years and we're about to write a book and we're about to do an Indiegogo campaign on um, for our book and screenplay the first 50 years freedom and friendship in Plymouth Colony so we'd really appreciate some support of that we've been doing that for decades and it's time that this co country comes to know the origin story of this nation that where the Indians and the pilgrims lived in peace and friendship that's at the foundation of our multicultural pluralist, pluralistic society and, and the freedom that, that both of these um, people brought to, um, to the Constitution and to the, the future of America. And where so, can they find out more about that? Well, we have, um, we're doing an Indiegogo campaign and uh, so they can contact us through the trustfrequency.net and also um, Let's see, how, how would they find out? We have a, a website called the, the baxterproject.org and you can see what, what we're up to around the founding of America. And see, we also do a whole bunch of work with Henry David Thoreau. We present at the Thoreau Society every year and Thoreau was a key player. He was a mystic and saw an expanded reality and, and brought it through uh, civil disobedience and he also spent extensive time with Native Americans, which no one knows. And he actually had an epiphany on Mount Katahdin, the mountain my family gave to the people of Maine. So we've got a lot of work we do around this America piece out in New England. And um, so I have a website called theamericanevolution.com. So we've got lots of websites. We've got lots of work. And if you go on our website and go into the Contact Us page and send us your email, we'll send you information about our Indiegogo campaign and about our other work because we've, we've got a, a very big body of work and it's all this trust-based paradigm what's driven humanity through the ages and and what the Native American what the role of the Native American is in the evolution of what we call the American mind the free mind this is key pieces that are missing out of the puzzle so uh, thank you for asking well, our time is up, and as usual, everybody, I will put together a wonderful page, which will have an embedded video, an embedded podcast, and I'll have all her information on there with everything you could possibly want to know with all of the links. So thank you so much for joining me. It was a treasure having you with me. So thank you, everybody. I wish you a wonderful night. Blessings to everybody. Please leave me your feedback. I love one. I love hearing about all your feedback. And if there's any questions that you have, please be, feel free to leave them. And for tonight, it's good night. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful night.